Health in India, Wikipedia Audio The Constitution of India makes health in India the responsibility of the state governments, rather than the central federal government. It makes every state responsible for raising the level of nutrition and the standard of living of its people and the improvement of public health as among its primary duties. The National Health Policy was endorsed by the Parliament of India in 1983 and updated in 2002 and again in 2017. There are great inequalities in health between states. Infant mortality in Kerala is 12 per thousand live births, but in Assam it is 56. According to World Bank, the total expenditure on healthcare as a proportion of GDP in 2014 was 4.7%. According to a 2005 report, 60% of India's children below the age of 3 were malnourished which was greater than the statistics of sub-Saharan African of 28%. It is considered that one in every three malnourished children in the world lives in India. The estimates varies across the country. It is estimated that Madhya Pradesh has the highest rate of 50% and Kerala the lowest with 27%. Although India's economy grew 55% from 2001-2006, its child malnutrition rate only dropped 1%, lagging behind countries of similar growth rate. Health Issues Malnutrition can be described as the unhealthy condition that results from not eating enough healthy food. A well-nourished child is one whose weight and height measurements compare very well within the standard normal distribution of heights and weights of healthy children of same age and sex. Malnutrition The main cause of female malnutrition in India is the tradition requiring women to eat last, even during pregnancy and when they are lactating, breast cancer, one of the most severe and increasing problems among women in India resulting in higher mortality rates, maternal mortality, Indian maternal mortality rates in rural areas are one of the highest in the world. Malnutrition impedes the social and cognitive development of a child. These irreversible damages result in lower productivity. As with serious malnutrition, growth delays hinder a child's intellectual development. Sick children with chronic malnutrition, especially when accompanied by anemia, often suffer from a lower learning capacity during the crucial first years of attending school. Also, it reduces the immune defense mechanism, which heightens the risk of infections. Due to their lower social status, girls are far more at risk of malnutrition than boys their age. Partly as a result of this cultural bias, up to one-third of all adult women in India are underweight. Inadequate care of these women already underdeveloped, especially during pregnancy, leads them in turn to deliver underweight babies who are vulnerable to further malnutrition and disease. Despite health improvements over the last 30 years, lives continue to be lost to early childhood diseases inadequate newborn care and childbirth-related causes. More than 2 million children die every year from preventable infections. Approximately 1.72 million children die each year before turning 1. The under-5 mortality and infant mortality rates have been declining, from 202 and 190 deaths per thousand live births respectively in 1970 to 64 and 50 deaths per thousand live births in 2009. However, this decline is slowing. Reduced funding for immunization leaves only 43.5% of the young fully immunized. A study conducted by the Future Health Systems Consortium in Murshidabad, West Bengal indicates that barriers to immunization coverage are adverse geographic location, 
absent or inadequately trained health workers and low perceived need for immunization. Infrastructure like hospitals, roads, water and sanitation are lacking in rural areas. Shortages of health care providers, poor intrapartum and newborn care, diarrheal diseases and acute respiratory infections also contribute to the high infant mortality rate. Diseases such as dengue fever, hepatitis, tuberculosis, malaria, and pneumonia continue to plague India due to increased resistance to drugs. In 2011, India developed a totally drug-resistant form of tuberculosis. HIV-AIDS in India is ranked third highest among countries with HIV-infected patients. National AIDS Control Organization a government apex body is making efforts for managing the HIV-AIDS epidemic in India. Diarrheal diseases are the primary causes of early childhood mortality. These diseases can be attributed to poor sanitation and inadequate safe drinking water. India has the world's highest incidence of rabies. In 2012 India was polio-free for the first time in its history. This was achieved because of the Pulse Polio program started in 1995-96 by the government. Malnutrition Indians are at particularly high risk for atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease. This may be attributed to a genetic predisposition to metabolic syndrome and adverse changes in coronary artery vasodilation. NGOs such as the Indian Heart Association and the Medwin Foundation were created to raise awareness. As more than 122 million households have no toilets, and 33% lack access to latrines, over 50% of the population defecate in the open. This is relatively higher than Bangladesh and Brazil and China. Although 211 million people gained access to improved sanitation from 1990-2008, only 31% used the facilities provided. Only 11% of Indian rural families dispose of stools safely whereas 80% of the population leave their stools in the open or throw them in the garbage. Open-air defecation leads to the spread of disease and malnutrition through parasitic and bacterial infections. Several million more suffer from multiple episodes of diarrhea and still others fall ill on account of hepatitis A, enteric fever, intestinal worms and eye and skin infections caused by poor hygiene and unsafe drinking water. Access to protected sources of drinking water has improved from 68% of the population in 1990 to 88% in 2008. However, only 26% of the slum population has access to safe drinking water, and 25% of the total population has drinking water on their premises. This problem is exacerbated by falling levels of groundwater caused mainly by increasing extraction for irrigation. Insufficient maintenance of the environment around water sources, groundwater pollution, excessive arsenic and fluoride in drinking water pose a major threat to India's health. Maternal deaths are similarly high. The reasons for this high mortality are that few women have access to skilled birth attendants and fewer still to quality emergency obstetric care. In addition, only 15% of mothers receive complete antenatal care and only 58% receive iron organ folate tablets or syrup. Women's health in India involves numerous issues. Some of them include the following. Rural India contains over 68% of India's total population, and half of all residents of rural areas live below the poverty line, struggling for better and easy access to health care and services. Health issues confronted by rural people are many and diverse from severe malaria to uncontrolled diabetes, from a badly infected wound to cancer. 
Postpartum maternal illness is a serious problem in resource-poor settings and contributes to maternal mortality, particularly in rural India. A study conducted in 2009 found that 43.9% of mothers reported they experienced postpartum illnesses six weeks after delivery. Furthermore, because of limited government resources, much of the health care provided comes from non-profits such as the Minds Foundation. The 12th five-year plan covering 2012 to 2017 was formulated based on the recommendation of a high-level experts group and other stakeholder consultations. The long-term objective of this strategy is to establish a system of universal health coverage in the country. Key points include Child malnutrition Forms of malnutrition the high-level expert group report recommends an increase in public expenditure on health from 1.58% of GDP currently to 2.1% of GDP by the end of the 12th five-year plan. However, even this is far lower than the global median of 5 percenter. The lack of extensive and adequately funded public health services pushes large numbers of people to incur heavy out-of-pocket expenditures on services purchased from the private sector. Out-of-pocket expenditures arise even in public sector hospitals, since lack of medicines means that patients have to buy them. This results in a very high financial burden on families in case of severe illness. Though. The 12th plan document express concern over high out-of-pocket expenditure, it does not give any target or time frame for reducing this expense. OOP can be reduced only by increasing public expenditure on health and by setting up widespread public health service providers. But the Planning Commission is planning to do this by regulating private health care providers. It takes solace from the HLEG report which admits that, the transformation of India's health system to become an effective platform for UHC is an evolutionary process that will span several years. High Infant Mortality Rate Diseases Poor Sanitation Safe Drinking Water Female Health Issues Instead of developing a better public health system with enhanced health budget, 12th five-year plan document plans to hand over health care system to private institutions. The 12th plan document causes concern over Rashtriya Swasthya Bhima Yojana being used as a medium to hand over public funds to the private sector through an insurance route. This has also incentivized unnecessary treatment which in due course will increase costs and premiums. There have been complaints about high transaction cost for this scheme due to insurance intermediaries. RSBY does not take into consideration state-specific variation in disease profiles and health needs. Even though these things are acknowledged in the report, no alternative remedy is given. There is no reference to nutrition as key component of health and for universal public distribution system in the plan document or HLEG recommendation. In the section of National Rural Health Mission in the document, the commitment to provide 30 to 50 bed community health centers per lock population is missing from the main text. It was easy for the government to recruit poor women as ASHA workers but it has failed to bring doctors nurses and specialists in this area. The ASHA workers who are coming from a poor background are given incentive based on performance. These people lose many days job undertaking their task as ASHA worker which is not incentivized properly. Even the 12th plan doesn't give any solace. To summarize, Successive administrative and political reforms have conveniently bypassed training citizens and local bodies to actively participate in health care. In a situation where people are not enabled to identify poor quality, speak up and debate.
there is dire need for the health system to fill that role on behalf of the people and can be easily done by decentralization of health care governance. A recent study pointed out that access to advanced medical facilities under a single roof was the main reason for the choice of private hospitals in both rural and urban areas. The second major reason for private health care preference was proximity of the facility in the rural area and approachability and friendly conduct of doctors and staff in the urban centers. Rural Health Twelfth Five-Year Plan Strategy Criticism